Good morning, church. Uh, it's such a beautiful day outside. I mean, it's so lovely to see um, all your faces out in the crowd and, um, or out there, and uh, uh, to all you guys watching through the live stream. Um, as we begin in worship, I just invite you guys to stand, whether you're in the building or at home, and join us in uh, worshiping our God. When we come to worship with our hearts, whether here or at home, we are joining ongoing worship in the glory of heaven. And we get a glimpse of that in Revelation 7, where it says, All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let's come to him in prayer. Lord God, we are gathered here and in our homes to come into your presence to worship you, to express our love to you with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We pray that by your Spirit, you would help us to experience your presence here and in our homes, and that 
your blessings would flow to us and through us, that as we worship, we also might be further equipped to be a blessing in the lives of each other and others. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ alone. Amen. And may you be graced now in receiving the greeting of our glorious God. Grace, mercy, peace, and joy be yours from the God who is and who was and who is to come. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, firstborn of the dead, King of kings and Lord of our lives. Amen.
You may be seated. This past Wednesday evening, I had the privilege and opportunity to officiate a backyard baptism of Madeline Judith Blumendahl. It was a opportunity provided with the blessing of the elders board and also with both sets of grandparents able to be present it was a, a beautiful evening and a blessed opportunity to share and uh, we wanted to share some pictures of that with you now and then also following that i'll invite you to stand up as we share in a, a promise of, of support as Madeline's church family. Uh, but first, a few pictures from this uh, backyard baptism opportunity. And as you could see, Madeline's sisters want it to be helpful as well. But I invite us now to stand as we make our church family promise of support uh, for Madeline. Is the promise of support? There it is. Excellent. So we now receive Madeline into Christ's church. Do you welcome her in love, and do you promise to pray for, encourage, and help nurture her in the faith? Yes, we do. God helping us. And let's continue celebrating in song.
shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then be in be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. At this point, we will ask David Steckley to come up for a congregational prayer. Good morning. Please join me in a time of congregational prayer. Let's pray. Great God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you with your people in a time of prayer. We give you all praise as the Eternal One and Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, to whom we can lift our words of rejoicing, thanksgiving, and petition. We praise you for being our God, the God of all who came before us and all who will follow us. You are the one to whom we can lift prayers of great need in time of pandemic and illness and also a simple word of joy when we marvel at the intricacies of something as small as a flower or as large as the universe. There is so much to praise you about today. Long, warm summer days interrupted with needed quenching showers. Time for rest and relaxation in a manner that has spurned many of us to revisit what is important in life and family life in particular, and just the comfort of knowing that through it all we are in your hands of care. As a songwriter once wrote, O oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us in your grace, and guide us when perplexed, and free us from all ills in this world and the next. May these words of praise and thanksgiving or our version of them, be manifest in our thoughts and actions and devotion to you, O God, as we continue to strive to serve you and be your hands and feet wherever you place us in service to your kingdom here on earth. Many of us are probably experiencing a mix of emotions this week, Father God, upon learning that your faithful servant, Pastor Ray, has accepted the call to service in your name from the Clinton CRC. Perhaps it is fitting and ordained by your guiding spirit that Pastor Ray's parting message as your servant at Bethel is on Thanksgiving. Perhaps the most abundant emotion we have right now is Thanksgiving for his faithful years of caring service, teaching, guiding, and building up of your flock here at Bethel. There is scarcely a family, person, or couple that have not been touched in some way during times of celebration or loss that have not been on the receiving end of his caring and empathetic manner. We're frustrated by the limitations placed in us as we manage our physical health safety through this pandemic. We pray for and eagerly look forward to an opportunity soon when we as your people here at Bethel can give a fulsome thank you and goodbye to Pastor Ray and Sue. We share similar emotions for Sue as well. And just thank you God that Pastor Ray has had such a wonderful partner in life and ministry and thank you for her supporting role in their decision process. We pray also for similar blessings to flow over her as she and Ray move into the next chapter in their lives. We will miss her faithful presence, particularly in the special prayer time before Sunday services that Sue has helped to support and promote. Today we pray for your continued blessing on Dave and Andrea Stewart as they celebrate 25 years of marriage this Wednesday. Continue to bless them as they bless others. We ask also your blessing on their daughter, Victoria, and Daniel Coy, who were united in marriage yesterday. May you be at the center of their lives as a married couple. We are thankful, our Father, for the baptism of Madeline Judas, daughter of Brad and Laura, that took place at their home this past week. May this young life grow and be a faithful servant of yours as you direct her life journey. Dear God, we are shocked and saddened to learn of the tragic passing of the father of Nicole Smythe as a result of an accident in which James Smythe was also injured. Grant them peace and comfort in your arms of care and may Nicole and James be comforted in the knowledge you are in control as the doctors and nurses tend to his physical recovery. 
Father God, we want to lift in prayer our brother in Christ, Harry Blumendahl, who will be undergoing surgery next Friday for an abdominal blockage. Guide and direct his medical team towards a successful surgery, and may his recovery be swift and complete. We also continue to lift in prayer our brother Kevin and his wife Andrea and family. Give them patience, strength, and endurance for the long haul of recovery that we continue to pray for and know that all things through you, including Kevin's return to health, are possible through you. For others in our church family with unspoken concerns, medical or otherwise, God, you know what they are, and it is our prayer that they too will find comfort in your presence and power over both heaven and earth. Give them also the peace that passes understanding. Bless and guide our leaders as they manage our nation and plan for a return to school in the fall, in the fall and opening, continued opening of our economy. These prayers of petition, praise, and thanksgiving we lift in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Today's scripture is Psalm 100. But first, will you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that we may hear your word with joy. Amen. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord in gladness. Come before him with joy so far. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And are his grace with thanksgiving. And his course with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That was beautiful. I want to thank the Sunday school children for preparing that and for the support of those who, who helped with that uh, preparation of the reading of Psalm 100. And Psalm 100, Psalm 100 is the final psalm in our summer playlist series. And this is also my final Sunday serving at Bethel after over 14, over 17 years of faithful service here. I don't know where 14 came from. The psalm was already sent in this series for this Sunday. And it's a very fitting psalm because it is a thanksgiving psalm. It's not that I'm thankful to leave. In fact, it's very hard to leave. I'm sad to leave, though I'm settled in my heart uh, with accepting the call to Clinton. But Psalm 100 is a fitting psalm because if anything expresses my thoughts and feelings about serving here in Bethel, it is deep gratitude for 17 years of very meaningful ministry shared. And gratitude, gratitude looks to the past to propel forward a hope-filled future. And Psalm 100, Psalm 100 is a timeless celebration of thanksgiving that shares both a direction and an expression of thanksgiving. And verse 3 and 5 especially provide a direction for expressing thanksgiving. Because thanksgiving simply falls flat if there's not someone to be thankful to. And so verse 3 and 5 says... Know that the Lord is God, it is he who made us, and we are his. 
We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. In verse 5, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. That's the direction, the direction of thanksgiving. Know that the Lord is God. Know that the Lord is God and know the truth about God. He is not one God among many gods. He is the one true God. He is incredible. He is magnificent. He is awesome. And he is holy in his splendor. The first commandment of the Ten Commandments says, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And Jesus, in giving the summary of the law, the great commandment begins with this being the first and the greatest. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's knowing God personally, and that's knowing the truth about God. We get that right, and thanksgiving is rightly directed. Now, amazingly, in the the pointing out the direction of thanksgiving in, in this psalm, the psalmist declares that God made us that we are his people. That God, the great, glorious, awesome, holy in his splendor God, made us and we are his people. For us, we are his church. We are the people of God, the body of Christ. You see, the church doesn't exist without God calling us together through Jesus Christ and with the equipping and with the empowerment and the presence of the Holy Spirit. The body of Christ brought together as the people of God with gifts and talents, with ministry passions and interests and opportunities. God's people, all those committed to Christ and those he is calling to himself who are seeking and searching. And I thank God, I thank God for calling together Bethel Church and for seeking to be faithful followers of Jesus Christ, empowered and equipped by the Holy Spirit. And I am so grateful for all those who have or do express their gratitude to God in faithful service, which is one of the expressions of thanksgiving to God. Serving the Lord with gladness. Over the years, I have served with council leaders and with ministry staff who are incredible people of God, faithfully serving with gladness. And so many have served with gifts and talents and and ministry opportunities and ministry passions in the church and in the community, shining light and showing love as our ministry motto expresses. And I'd love to name you all and all the ministry opportunities and uses of gifts that you have expressed over the years that I have been here that I'm deeply grateful for and that you have expressed as gratitude to God in serving with joy. And I do thank God for you, people of God, serving with gladness as an expression of gratitude to God. He is our God. We are his people. And the psalmist goes on to say that we are the sheep of his pasture. The sheep of his pasture. And like a shepherd, God, the good shepherd, guides, cares for, comforts, and sometimes carries us. The sheep of his pasture are his people. 
the family of God, the church family. And here in, at Bethel, a growing and increasingly diverse family. A family that has gone through and is going through challenges and celebrations and changes together. And I thank God for the privilege of joining with you, of coming alongside as an under-shepherd of the Good Shepherd, and having the incredible opportunity to come alongside and to share the journey with you in times of grief, in times of deep challenges, and also in times of joyful celebrations and everything in between those. These are precious opportunities that I thank God for and that I will certainly treasure. So this psalm, this psalm expresses thanksgiving from God's people, the sheep of his pasture, the body of Christ, the family of Christ. God has made us, and we are his. And the thanksgiving is appropriately directed towards God, towards God who is declared further in this psalm to be good. His love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Again, gratitude in the past propels us to a hope-filled future. And that's because this same God is always with us and always for us. Our God who is good, who is loving, who is faithful, has been with us, is with us, and will be with us. And expressing gratitude for the past propels us to a hope-filled future. And so, very fittingly, another expression of thanksgiving that is all over and all through this psalm is coming before him with joyful singing. Entering his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, giving thanks to him and praising his name as the psalmist expresses. And these gates and courts of God, he referred to where the, the people of God, Israel, worshipped. And to enter into his gates and into his courts was to enter into God's very presence. Amazingly, and for which we can express even greater gratitude, Amazingly, through Jesus Christ, we now have direct access into God's presence anytime, anywhere, through prayer and through praise. And one of the ways to enter into his presence is to share in music and song together. As we do here, and as you have the opportunity to do at home to share in music and song. And I thank God for those who lead us into God's presence in worship. Over the years, I have been so thankful for our worship teams and for our musical accompanists here at Bethel. I've often sat back in simple amazement at the number and the depth of those with musical gifts and the commitment to prepare and to share in leading worship. Many in the worship teams have been serving in that worship leadership the entire time that I've been here. And it's also been a delight to see youth readily stepping into leading worship. And amazingly, I see some doing that now who weren't even born when I came here and were born since I came here. Certainly a sign of what the psalmist declares of God's faithfulness through the generations. And so Bethel, you are an amazing, 
amazing body of Christ and church family. And I thank God for you. I thank God for you and for the amazing opportunity for a wonderful season of ministry journeying with you. And I encourage you to continue to live out Psalm 100, expressing your thanksgiving in, in serving joyfully and in singing joyfully, continuing to cultivate a, a grateful heart, a grateful heart for God's goodness, for God's enduring love, for God's faithfulness, his faithfulness throughout all generations. It's gratitude that looks to the past that propels us forward with hope. And Bethel, you have so many strengths to give thanks to God for and to go into the future with hope, with hope. Growing in gratitude and expressing gratitude and doing it all to the glory of God. Amen. I'd like to invite the worship team to come forward and to, uh, to share a song, of, a song of response, of singing of God's love enduring forever. And I invite us to stand as we share in this celebration song.
So I apologize, but I'm going to read because everything that I have on here is exactly what I want to say. Just a very quick comment from the church and from council. Uh, we all know now, Pastor Ray, that you're on, or, on your way to Clinton, and today is indeed your last preaching service, and things do go quick. Um, I'm going to read this because it's just a lot easier. After 17 years as our pastor, we will truly miss you, Sue, and your family. We're very thankful that God had led you here, where you have served God, us, and the community so well. We will miss you, Ray, Sue, Kendra, and Matt. You truly have exemplified to us and the community your love for God and have shown as a light in Acton and as a daily example of God's love. For now, thank you. We still have time after today for a proper thank you. Um, on Sunday, August 30th, Nick will be officiating, and Pastor Ray will be here, and we'll have a couple things up our sleeve, perhaps. Um, but for today, church and friends, please continue to pray for Pastor Ray and his family. Pray for the transition to Clinton, that it will be smooth, and pray for the Clinton congregation and for us here at Bethel as we start a new chapter. It has indeed been a very good 17 years. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness and care and support. And the blessing that I'd like to close with is one of my favorite from the Book of Numbers. It's sometimes called the Aaronic Blessing, which has to be said very carefully. It is the Aaronic Blessing because it's the one that Aaron the priest gave. And it is one that I have given hundreds of times in this church to you as my church family, and I am privileged to speak this blessing over us today. The Lord bless you and keep you. The short Lord shine the light of his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly toward you and grant you his perfect peace. Amen. Wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness
brightest. You will lead us through the storm. 